Do the Math, Secrets, Lies, and Algebra by Wendy Lichman. Chapter 5, Circular Thinking. The first thing that Mr. Wright talked about in history class was the U.S. Constitution test. This test is for is of infinite importance, is what he said. Which is, of course, ridiculous. Infinite means that there's no end to something. That it's immeasurable. You can never get to the end of the number line. For example, because you can always add one more number, so that is infinite. But, give me a break. No test is close to being of infinite importance. Mr. Wright is always making mistakes like that when he says anything that has to do with math. I know he's not a complete idiot, though, because he's actually very good at teaching history. I sort of glanced over at Richard, who sits in front of me to the right, and watched him zip his backpack, then unzip it, then zip it again, while Mr. Wright talked about the infinitely important test. I apologize, class, Mr. Wright said, for telling you there would be three essay questions. I received the exams from the state yesterday, and I see that it is, in fact, all multiple choice. I'm afraid I'm going to have to do a complete 360 on this. That is another perfect example of how hard math is for Mr. Wright. A circle has 360 degrees. So when you do a complete 360, you go all the way around and end up at the very same place you started which would mean that the test would still have three essay questions. We start essay questions, go all the way around, and end up back at essay questions. What Mr. Wright meant to say was that he was doing a 180, which would take him halfway through the circle. The way he would, that way he would come out on the other side to all multiple choice. Essay questions, 180 degrees to multiple choice. I raised my hand at the exact same time Mr. Wright was asking who would volunteer to pass out the study guide for the exam. So when he said tests, and I said, it's only 180 degrees, he squinted at me like I was something too close for him to read without glasses. Well, thank you, he said as he handed me the pile of papers. Richard obviously didn't need a study guide, so I walked right past him. So when he looked up and put out his hands, I dropped one on his desk and he said, Gas, yes. Luis, who sits next to him, kind of laughed at that. But even if I didn't know Richard was a thief and a cheater, I wouldn't think there was anything funny about saying thank you in Spanish. Even if Richard were still greater than me, I don't think I would have laughed. As soon as I gave Luis his study guide, he took off the top of the thin black pen he always uses and began drawing in the margins. Luis will draw on anything. He's got a lion growling on one of his sneakers and two tiny cars racing each other down the inside of his left arm. Whenever you see a fake tattoo that's really good, you know that Luis was the artist. I can make 3D letters that look good, but other than that, I'm not an artist at all. Even though you, th you might think I would be because of my mom. Miranda's in charge of the decorating committee for the winter dance. And she asked me to make a banner that says celebrate for the wall of the cafeteria, which is the only kind of thing I can draw. The Bill of Rights, Mr. Wright announced, rubbing his hands together like he was about to eat the most delicious dessert. Ah, the Bill of Rights, he repeated as I put the extra study guides on his desk and sat down. Sammy, can you tell us exactly what the Bill of Rights is? Whenever Mr. Wright wants the right answer, quickly... He calls on Sammy, and really you can't blame him, because why take an hour to get an answer that she can give you in one second? The first ten amendments to the Constitution, Sammy answered in exactly one second. Mr. Wright nodded and looked around the room. And an example, he asked? Lynn said, freedom of speech, which is the one amendment we all know since Mr. Wright has been talking about it since the first day of school. Thank you, Lynn, for starting us with the First Amendment. Mr. Wright said, others, he asked. After people started giving all these made-up freedoms, like the freedom to wear the kind of clothes you like and the freedom to chew gum in school, Sammy said something real. She said that the Sixth Amendment said you had the right to a speedy trial and the right to know who witnessed the crime and the right to a defense lawyer. Is your hand up, Richard, Mr. Wright said, and Richard 
looked directly at me when he said, Freedom to privacy. Hmm, Mr. Wright said. Say more, please. Privacy, Richard said, like it's nobody business what you're doing. Mr. Wright is a very nice person, so he always tries to make the answer sound right, even if it's way off. I think you might be referring to the Fourth Amendment, Mr. Wright said to Richard. That is unnecessary search and seizure, which means that the police can't search you or your home without probable cause. They can't look in your house without first getting a search warrant from the court. Is that what you're speaking about? He asked Richard. Yeah, Richard said, but I knew that wasn't true. I knew that Richard was really talking about the freedom to steal a test and not get caught. Mr. Wright doesn't usually say three stupid math things in one day, but today he outdid himself. When he divided us into groups to talk about what we'd want in the Westlake Bill of Rights, he pointed to Marcus, Richard, and James and said, Okay, three are a pair. That's impossible for three of anything to be a pair. It's like saying, Okay, you three are a dozen. But Mr. Wright just kept going around the room, pointing to threesomes and saying, Okay, you three by the window, you're a pair. There are 33 kids in the class, so Mr. Wright must have said that very same stupid thing 11 times.